So we have details of the next patch for Outriders, which is a big one, guys. Yes, this is the one that buffs all of our classes, and I cannot wait for it. Today, we get into all the details of what's gone on over the past week, as well as details on the next patch. How's it going, guys? My name is DPJ, and if you enjoyed the video, leaving a like it really helps out. And if you like what you see and want to see more Outriders, be sure to subscribe. Okay, so getting into it, people. Okay, so it starts with patch news. Our latest patch is mostly complete, except for one outstanding issue. The crashes that appeared for some users attempting to launch Outriders since the previous patch are still being investigated. This is an issue we are very keen to resolve before patching the game again, as we do not want to subject players to such a crash any longer than absolutely necessary. We have a few leads as to what might be causing the crashes, but with some of these crashes appearing to be very random and having various different solutions for different people, identifying the root cause is providing tricky. While running the game in DX11 appears to be the most consistent fix, I've shared various different fixes and workarounds here. Which if you do want to check it out guys, if you're having issues with the game crashing, you'll find that link below. However, our aim is of course to ensure that players shouldn't even encounter these to begin with. If you are encountering such a crash and would like to help us with this matter, we'll be very keen to have a look at your DX Diac and game user settings the INI files. The INI file can be found on your PC here. And you can see that on screen guys and if you would like to share them you can get in touch with this dude directly via reddit again a link to this post you'll find below we would very much like to release this patch as soon as possible ideally next week but its release will depend on us identifying and resolving the aforementioned crashes then running through some testing to ensure the fixes are working as intended we'll confirm further details when we're able to Here's what you can look forward to as part of the upcoming patch. In the spirit of continued transparency and as the patch is nearing completion we wanted to share some initial patch highlights with you. Note, these things are not live today and may still be subject to change ahead of the patch release. This list is not exhaustive but it is a selection of things we know you'll be most excited about. Upcoming fixes and changes. We'll improve the multiplayer experience so that the branding and pocket loss should now be reduced for players under 350 MS pings. We'll fix the Technomancer's Borealis Monarch set and correctly grant the 90% damage increase to any frozen targets. We'll resolve an issue with the Devastator statue set and change its description to match its behaviour. It's new in your description you'll see on the screen now. The old functionality meant that the statue set bonus could end after 8 seconds. Reworking this set means that the bonus can now be maintained for longer. We'll fix an issue that caused the tricksters hunt the prey to not turn the player towards an enemy's back if aiming down sights immediately after activation. We'll improve the targeting of the trickster's venator's knife so that it should now more consistently target a player's intended enemy. We'll implement a change to the anti-duplication system so that your equipped items will not be taken into account when checking whether to reroll a dropped duplicate. We'll fix an issue whereby players who are at level 50 may appear as level 1 in a party. Let me read that again. We'll fix an issue whereby players who are at level 50 people, 50, don't we only go up to a level 30? I mean, yes, our weapons and armor go up to a 50. Hmm, interesting. Okay, so upcoming buffs. Pyromancer, feed the flames. The ammo replenished by the bully absorption mod has been increased to 40%. It was previously 33%. Volcanic rounds. The resistance debuff provided by the susceptibility mod has been increased to 50%. Previously, 34 The reload boost and lava shots mods have had their perks swapped. Reload boost will now increase anomaly power, it was previously firepower, and lava shots will now increase firepower, which was previously anomaly power. Ash Blast. Ash Blast has had its base skill cooldown reduced by 5 seconds, from 27.5 to 23.5 seconds. The buff duration of Death Sentence mod 
has been increased by 3 seconds from 5 to 8 seconds. On to the trickster. Barrel time. Reduce the cooldown of barrel time by 3.5 seconds. So from 13.5 to 10 seconds, not bad. Slow trap. The cooldown of slow trap has been reduced by 10.7 seconds. From 30.7 seconds to 20 seconds. Wow! What's that? Basically over 30%. Not bad at all. Time rift. The cooldown of time rift has been reduced by 3.4 seconds from 15.4 to 12 seconds. Increase the DLT damage of the A Little Bit of Pain mod by 71%. From base of a 0.35 AP to a 0.6 AP. Nice. Condense the DLT duration of a Little Bit of Pain mod to 6 seconds. It was previously 10. Increase the armor and resistance debuff provided by the time crank mod to 35%, it was previously 25%. Increase the weapon cleave damage provided by the pain transfer mod to 20% weapon damage, previously 10% weapon damage. On to the Technomancer. Pain Launcher. Reduce the base cooldown of Pain Launcher by 10 seconds, from 40 seconds down to 30 seconds. Edit. It was mistakenly listed as reduced to 17 due to an error on my part. Apologies for the confusion. Actual reduction is by 10 seconds to 30 seconds. Shrapnel. Reduce the base cooldown of shrapnel by 5 seconds, from 22 seconds to 17 seconds. Freeze turret. The hail shot mod has had its SPS set to 1.5, previously 1. FPS controls how much the mod benefits from the stays power attribute. The change effectively means that the damage increase provided by hail shot will increase by 50%, though the effectiveness of this improvement still depends on the character status power attribute. Onto the devastator. Boulder Dash using this skill will now provide significant damage reduction during its animation, 65%. Players can now press trigger again to use an area of effect attack during a run animation, not bad. Endless Mass, enemies affected by Endless Mass can now be damaged and killed during the animation, pretty cool. Change the Wide Horizons mod so that on top of the range increase the mod will allow Endless Mass to ignore the enemy skill absorbing skin used by Alpha Pathetos and Brood Mothers. Reflect Bullets End skill early will now refund part of the cooldown up to 90%. That's actually pretty cool. And then on to Universal Buffs. Armor mod buffs. Personal space has had its damage bonus increased from 15% to 25%. Crit stack will have its anomaly power boost increased by 21%, from base 5.79 to 7. Stand tool will have its base fire power bonus increased by 20% and its base anomaly power by 16%, from a base level 10 firepower and 15 anomaly power to 12 firepower and 17.5 anomaly power. Perseverance Shield will have its base shield value increased by 40%, from base 25 to 35. Note, this patch will also fix a bug whereby Preservant Shield could trigger and grant shield after death. Blazing Aegis will have the armor increase it grants increased by 21%, from my base 46.35 to 56. Plate Dodger will have its armor value grant increased by 12%, from base 58 to 65, and its duration increased by 5 to 7 seconds. And Weapon Mods. Anomaly Enhancement will have its coefficiency increased by 30% Anomaly Power to 40%. Bone Shrapnel will have its damage increased by 5%. From base of a 56.7 to a 59.85. And on screen now guys we can see an ongoing list of currently tracked issues which if you want to read through these, pause the video and be my guest. But yes guys, they say this patch may come next week depending if they can fix the crashes with the game. I mean this is a patch I do look forward to. Many things are changing and many builds will be created around what's been changed and I cannot wait. But yes guys, tell me your thoughts on this down below in that comment section obviously. If any more news drops around in the game, I'll have you covered right here on my channel. But yes, I'm going to love you and leave you and end the video. Guys, if you enjoyed it, leaving a like really helps out. If you're new around here and want to see more Outriders, be sure to subscribe. And if you never want to miss a video I upload, you can turn notifications on by hitting that bell button. But guys, thanks as always for stopping by and hopefully I will see you on that next one.